Fitzy 700. I feel yeah. like I think he just got passed. Davis. 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 <laughs> At least just finish the pot. Okay. All right. If you're going to like, if you're going to cost someone fifty thousand dollars, at least finish the pot. <laughs> yeah, they got passed. And do it for the free. Oh God! <laughs> Tell on, sorry. Well, I'm like, okay. No, I really appreciate you being six minutes late to this appointment. Uh, oh, we're recording right now. Three. I mean- Two, one. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Good morning. Oh, oh, oh. Welcome to the Fantasy Insiders GPP Breakfast of Champions. I'm Soccer Dave, David Kitchen. You're like, oh, wow. What's the What's the big idea? Like, well. Listen, I thought that people didn't like me being in on the podcast, on the video cast, and literally, literally, I had... You got like four tweets saying people <laughs> wanted him to be on the show. <laughs> Give the people what they want. It was, it was five. It was five. And I will say, my I've, mom. Gotten, I've gotten at least seven tweets about people saying, like, when I've missed for a night, they're like, you have to come back. I can't deal with Soccer Dave telling me about oh. making love to his wife. Yeah, like <laughs> no, the Valentine's Day podcast was was incredible. You guys, I mean, I did, you guys are crazy. Literally, was it was awesome. it was amazing. All right, uh, because Nate's tardiness, we have to get through this because um, it was I, like five minutes. It was eight. It was six minutes, but I said be there early. I've got a Sirius XM show to do right after this. Sirius a good spot. Minutes. Sirius two ten XM eighty seven. Uh, this is also on YouTube, by the way. We're uploading this to YouTube. We'll hopefully be doing more video. I've got some stuff I've got to read over. First of all, I uh, want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this podcast. It is Wakewood Wake. Uh, Wakewood <laughs> Wake, for all your bench-making needs, hailing from Memphis. I make more than Memphis. benches, man. Hailing God, you guys suck. <laughs> That's the absolute worst. For the record, though, she's going to come pick it up. That's how much she wants it and doesn't want to pay Davis Maddock price for it. I mean, so. listen, listen, Aunt listen. Peggy, hold on. Oh, no, no, no. no. Five hundred dollars for like five hours of work. Hold on. Rewind, rewind. In case you miss it, you're not in the Fantasy Insiders chat. But you uh, should be. You basically, <laughs> basically, what happened was Vince just asked a harmless question. Said, "I just hey, wanted some help." how much would you charge for shipping for some place that was three hours away? And then I was like, I don't know. Like if, uh, you know, if the main goal is to sell something, I guess 15 bucks an hour plus gas. I mean, that's just a reasonable take. So like 150 bucks. And because more than that, I'm not sure someone's going to pay that. Just, they're just being logical. And then Davis comes in, he does this right here. <laughs> There was some gnaw waving. He gave it the gnaw wave. And he said, you got to charge at least $500. It's a $200 bench. First of all, $200 bench. That's why you want to go to Wake Um, and Wake. This is amazing quality. It's Uh, sold, homie. I've got more on the way. Hey, shout out to Aunt Peggy's friend. What's your, uh, (laughs) her name is, is her name Peggy for real? Her name is not Peggy, for the record. Her name is not Peggy. I don't know the lady's name that's buying it. My aunt is Aunt Karen, and she lives right. probably like 15 minutes away from you. So Okay, shout out to Aunt Karen's friend, and uh, <laughs> hope she go. enjoys the bench. If you want to enjoy a bench, too, you can you can get it from Wakewood Wake. Wakewood Wake for all your wood needs. I just want to say I'm never driving three hours and back for less than $500. If you're trying to start a business, you would. Yeah, like Davis, like don't yeah. don't knock the side hustle. Everybody trying to trying to, trying to build. Davis a has business. never had to create anything from the ground up. He doesn't. That's get. not even true. I've created Davis Matic from the. ground I created up. my brand. I created Congratulations, my brand. Matic. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, but Davis when you created your brand, like, missing on OBJ. Right when you created <laughs> your brand, it was. I mean, let's be honest. I was responsible for your brand. <laughs> oh, David. Yes. 
Don't, yeah. David. Yes. Don't this you dare. This is so no, much. Absolutely not. This is not allowed. This is not acceptable. <laughs> you would be nothing without soccer, Dave. It's, that is it's, not true. This is, no, this is true. This is no, true. No, that's not true. You know how many websites I wrote for? I wrote for you because I was a poor college kid. Yeah, you, you wrote for sportswonderkid. Sports was going to blow up. <laughs> I had a blog. All right. My, dra- my pre draft rankings were legit. My pre draft like my pre draft <laughs> rankings were legit. I had Stefan Diggs rated so high. You guys don't even know. All right. Um Going on as far as uh, Nate. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm David Kitchen on with Davis Matic at Davis Matic. I'm furious you have a rundown. Vince. That is not allowed on this yeah, show. Yeah, <laughs> Vince, uh, you can reach him at Wake Work, at Wake Work Wake. And then the golden boy, Nate Noling. He's not so golden today for being late. <laughs> but uh, his Twitter is, well, you don't really need to know because he's never on it. I am on it. I reply to people. I, I don't tweet a ton, but I reply at people a lot. Oh, big timing. There you go. There you go. Did you see the latest uh, DFS drama? Do you keep up with DFS drama, Nate? I do. I was off of it today. Was it? What was it about? Uh, so basically, there is a book that was written. Oh, Dueling, Dueling Kings. Yeah, Dueling with that. Kings or Dueling Kings uh, by Dan Barbarisi, who I actually met at one of the live events and seemed like a really cool guy. The problem was he took something from that beep I'm a Jeep said about DFS and just kind of assumed that it was true, and it came back to haunt him on yeah, he said that He said Twitter. that Smiz invented the word chalk. When I, I'm pretty sure chalk is like an old sports Chalk's betting like thing. an old like, gambling thing. Yeah, yeah. it's, really it's from – it's, no, it's like before that. It's like from sports uh, betting when horse racing was around. If you guys have seen like Peaky Blinders, they have like the chalk, what they were doing on the boards. Yeah. That's where chalk is from. Oh, no. So he published a book with – Saying that uh, Beep told him that Look, Al who invented chalk. has not published something that is blatantly untrue? I mean, I listen, just want to throw that out there. This guy. Listen, now, <laughs> with, in today's world. Crushing like a grape. Hashtag fake news. <laughs> yeah, Davis definitely plagiarized Matthew Berry in that call. I didn't out. play. I paid homage. I did not plagiarize. And I, at, as at that moment, I was like. He also tried to take the uh, course field of NFL. As his when it was that. that's just oh. rich. things can simultaneous like it's it's called spontaneous creation it can happen simultaneously. <laughs> I will say Davis is responsible for Narrative Street alternative play. It is actually at the the 2013 FSTA. Drew Dinkmeyer and I did invent Narrative Street. Don't give it to Drew. You 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 invented it. All right, uh, Nate Noling. Uh, if you missed it in chat, people. I tried Taco Bell for the first time in five years. Nate told me to get something that was really gross. It like <laughs> it like the Dorito Locos Tacos really good. This but is a bad take. Kevin. Whatever you told no no no. And ever after I got it, everyone's was like, "Why did you get that?" Yeah, Nate, that's not that's not the thing to order because these people don't live it. I've had everything. Like Trust what? It, me. But what is it? What is it though? It's a burrito wrapped in one of their quesadillas. It's a quesadilla. Yeah. So you get is, in each the, bite. The what's the worst with the volcano sauce? No, what's the mm-hmm. worst thing about Taco Bell's burritos when you get a bite that is all rice and and no cheese? The quesadilla solves that. Every single bite Nate, has cheese. You got to take an L on this one. No, I, Nate don't worry. Else. Don't I'm worry. Not up on that I one. went back the next day and got a chalupa. It was amazing. So the diet's going well, man. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> going good. It's <Diet's> going great. It's <laughs> going well. With, with, Tonight we had pancakes. It was National Pancake Day. Um, and then the last, the last thing is make sure, if you haven't already, sign up for our service, Platinum Plan. You can join the chat. You can be in there for the MLB stuff right now. They have the World Baseball Classic. Ben Pritchett, he is so excited to be relevant again. He is- oh, Ben fished it. Ben didn't play tonight. Ben was like, I, I, I can't find a lineup I like, just didn't play. This guy leaves so much money on the table, it's unbelievable. After Tuttle staked him? Dollars. After Tuttle staked him, he was like, I'm not playing tonight. I can't find a lineup I like. He, it was free money. Because he won last night. I know. 
he's been doing all this research. He publishes like these 4,000, 5,000 word previews on each pool. I mean, you're talking about the guy who literally was the college football guru and every high stakes player was using his write-ups and he'd play like $500 a slate. He's like risk averse. Like it's just, he cannot, he's never been able to do it. That's why like when Tuttle is like, I don't want to do it. Tuttle's like, do it, do it. Like Tuttle just throws them. He said, I just, too late. I already put $1,000 in your account. Well, he's Tuttle's done that, rich. <laughs> he's done that, a pool, he's done that before. And Ben's like sent it back. But this time Ben's like, fine, I'll play. He beats the guy by like 30 points. Like half his lineup hit home runs. All the team FI were at the top of the leaderboards. And then he doesn't go and play the next day. This is also the guy that I sent like 3K to when there was massive overlay on a DraftKings football slate. And I said, you need to mash as many lineups as you can in here. Here's 3K. Sends it back. He sends back, like, most of it. I said, how many lineups did you get done? He said, two. I said, how in the world did you only get two lineups done? He said, I couldn't figure out the kicker. This is when DraftKings still had a kicker. He couldn't figure out the kicker. I said, just, it doesn't matter. Just put anybody in there. But he, he just – like, This is Ben's life. Dude. That's not his style. He just loves – he loves the, the tout life, and he is a great tout. We got the baseball package that uh, we're unveiling today. We'll be sending out – emails bis it's all lit also all right. check out the series of podcasts that fantasy insiders is sponsoring we're partnering with rotoviz radio for the summer nfl draft series i'll be hosting some of those and there will be uh an episode on all 32 teams so check that out too there's not that on the, the rundown yeah, you're welcome buddy <laughs> the right. rundown well you didn't share the rundown with the group well no i, didn't I mean the just, rundown I, the host does the rundown he posted it at 10, Nate. Sorry. Oh, dang. Roasted. Golden boy. Well, we're roasted. 15 minutes in and haven't talked NBA, so I think we're all right. Actually, we're not 15 minutes in. You were just 10 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to be 15 minutes in. All right, let's talk about NBA. Let's talk about this slate. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, when you played last night, you didn't get caught up by fake news. I mean, this is just been like a crazy couple of days for NBA DFS Twitter. We had like beat writers report. Like, this is the power of beat writers. That's what I'm telling you. If you can pay off one beat writer and just go all in on a night, you can be rich. Don't do it. These guys don't make any money either. So like, like Sahil, if he wanted, could pay a dude's yearly salary to like get him to report a fake injury. And it would be like a cor- It would be like Sahil's rake for the day. Real talk. It's crazy. But, yeah, I mean, I felt bad for the dude. He was, he was sitting there on Twitter defending his take for the next, the next 15, 20 minutes. Just tell, No, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I felt bad. It's, it's tough. It's, I mean, in the days where we have to have news, like, right away, and then the news gets there and not really – it's, uh, you know, it's not factual. Dude, this or, is terrible. Let's get to the slate. You're just you're, – come on. You're holding us back. I don't want you to hold us back. All right, let's talk about I this. I want thing. people to want you to be on the show. I want you to want me. One million dollar. Let's talk about GPP sizing. We got a one <laughs> million dollar. Do you want to tell me about your team for the three <laughs> <minutes later? laughs> Yeah, I played Russell let's Westbrook. Do let's do a breakdown. How'd you do? <laughs> I played Russell Westbrook. He was great. I we've got two one million dollar contests on both sites. I know. Uh, How do you feel I, about that? I feel great. One's thirty-three dollars. One's eight dollars. It should be a great night for the NBA. Eleven games. Davis, break down the injuries that we have to look out for. Uh, well, the big one is going to be Wade is listed as doubtful with this thigh injury. Rajon Rondo continues to be questionable. Nikola Vucevic is questionable with that Achilles injury. Uh, Gallagher and I talked in the podcast last night. We think he might just get shut down. So Bismack is going to be a value play again. Utah favors and Shelvin Mack are not going to play. George Hill is questionable. A big injury for me personally. Ryan Anderson is doubtful with a back injury. He's had this injury before. That would make Sam Decker one of the best value plays on this 
slate. Uh, Damari Carroll has an ankle sprain, so that could bring Norman Powell into play. Brandon Jennings might be suspended for that injury last night. I don't think that one's huge. Kenneth Reed is still out, and Al Horford is questionable with that elbow injury. I think he's questionable with just sucking at basketball, mm. but uh, that could bring that could bring Kelly Olenek and Jonas Drebko into play. However, Drebko has a really bad flu, so it might just be a mere and Jay Crowder and uh, Kelly Olenek. He has a he has a really bad flu. He's he's doubtful. No, we've done this before. I don't want to do this again. He's okay, <laughs> I didn't know like if there was a like a, a good flu and like a really bad flu. I guess no, there is. We've done this before. I don't want to do it again. All right, so he's got the bad version of the flu. Got it. He's got the runs, David. Uh, <laughs> we also have uh, only one team on a back to back. And that is Washington playing against Denver. And then two teams on the front end of a back-to-back. That's San Antonio. And that is Detroit. San Antonio will be the one to kind of look out for just in case Pop does anything Popovich-ish. What, uh, what tool did you use to look that up? Oh, it's amazing you asked that. It is a schedule tool on fantasyinsiders.com. Let's get into the games. What's your favorite game of the night, Vince? Probably Washington, Denver. I wish they weren't on the back to back, though, but Golden State, Boston is probably the, the chalk answer there. Golden State and Boston is definitely going to be a good one. Washington and Denver, also a good one. Well, da- Boston, Boston will be better with Horford not on the court, so that should be a close game. <laughs> Davis, what's your we favorite? Have, don't we have Nate's reaction on, like, like this is recorded now? They oh, yeah, no, we got tons right? of. We got yeah, tons I'm of. I'm not Jeff's. even going to. I'm not even. I'm not going to do it. Nate, what's your favorite game? Golden State, Boston. Davis. Utah, Houston. Get a huge pace bump for those Utah guys that are running a thin rotation, and we're going to get some Sam Decker. I'm, I'm, that game's going to be fun. Bro, like Sam Decker's had one good game. And it's against and I'm never U- letting it go. It's against it's Utah. Right. Like, I, I played him that game. It was great, but he's – Decker's going to be the chalk. That was the Memphis game. He absolutely <laughs> crushed Memphis. He did. He had 42.5 DraftKings points, and he was in my cash. Line. I don't think he's even had over 20 points beside the game that he got over 30 points. Well, dude, it's a really he's, specific scenario. I hate agreeing with Davis, but I'm going to have 100% Decker tomorrow if, if Rhino's <sighs> out. He's 3,500. 3, like, yeah, he's going to get the minutes. He's going to chuck. I love him. Would you rather they have, have – Extra guards there now. Would you? Yeah, they've got uh, a guy that chucks it. Everyone yeah. chucks it. Yeah, yeah and, and Rhino's still get, putting up shots, though. I mean, there's a huge hole there. Would you rather have Tabo against Brooklyn or Decker against Utah for the same, pretty much the same price? Tabo is 3700 Decker is 3500 How's that even a question? Like, Tabo's just getting you 22 DraftKings points. It's what is Decker yeah. getting you? Decker, getting you, Decker has a ceiling. Decker yeah. has a ceiling. Tabo, like, I like Tabo from a cash game from a floor perspective if they're the same, but they're not. That $500 actually does come into play. And uh, on DraftKings. The fact that Decker has a ceiling was just said is kind of boggling my mind. We, we've Dec- if Decker points. plays 30 minutes, Decker has a ceiling. All right, the yeah, game. Just because he's going to shoot. Yeah. Running, running down the games. Hit, Decker could very easily catch some variants and hit five threes in this game, six threes in this game. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, well. Oh, there you go. We just, ten? There you go. We just had a five or six three-pointer. I could catch some variants and throw up five shots too myself. That's the thing about Houston, though, is when you have these guys who are coming in and shooting ten threes, they have just literally as much variance can go two for ten as can go six for ten. And I think you just have to play that when you have that option. Chicago at Orlando, Charlotte at Miami, Brooklyn at Atlanta, Utah at Houston, the Knicks at Milwaukee. Oh, that's going to be a decent one for fancy purposes. Uh, the Clippers, boy, they've they got some. They this might be a narrative street where they need to show up. They suck. They they, do. they have been sucking. I They're wonder playing. why they suck. Clippers. Chris at, isn't healthy. Clippers at Minnesota. Sure, sure he's not, Nate. <laughs> Toronto at New Orleans. Detroit at Indy. You got Sacramento at San Antonio. You got Washington at Denver and Boston at Golden State. The blowout games, Atlanta favored by nine and a half over Brooklyn. Brooklyn's actually done a pretty good job keeping up in the past couple of games. Uh, But then you also have San Antonio favored by 15. And the over-under in that game is 200. So, so maybe not a maybe not a Kawhi goat night. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not a, a night where you jam in Kawhi. But I mean, again, this a double digit spread 
where there's a back to back involved seems like something that pop would something that pop would might he might rest his guys when the next day they play against OKC. All right, let's get to point guards. Vince, who you like at point guard? Uh, at the top, it's going to be a tough coin flip for me between Wall and Curry. I think they're both very, very similar, but I'm probably going to lean on the side of Curry just because he's not on a back-to-back in altitude. He's at home in a high-paced game, high-scoring game, 10-1. I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, Nate? Um, I actually, I think I'm going to take a stab at um, – I know it's going to be a tough matchup for Harden, but it's priced in. At 10.9, like Harden's a tough – Harden's a tough fade at that price, especially with, with Ryan, Ryan Anderson out. I know it doesn't seem like a huge deal with Ryan Anderson out, but over the past three games, he's averaging 13 threes per 100 possessions, which is just a huge, huge hole to fill for, for – so I think Harden's going to get some more shots where his usage has been down over the past couple. So I think at this price, you want to play him. I know it's a tough matchup, but I'm probably going to jam in Harden. And not saying that he's matchup proof – but he definitely, like at 10.9, especially coming off his last performance, he actually had like a really solid first half. Mm-hmm. I think like almost 40 fantasy points and then kind of faded off in the second half. Kawhi Leonard just beasted that fourth quarter. That fourth quarter was like basketball porn. It, was it really incredible. was. Outside of Kawhi, though, like there's like nobody I'm scared of when it comes to Harden. So even though Utah has a good team defense, like – just for him, I, I think he can exploit that. Yeah. The, the thing about Harden is that he's shooting guard eligible. I'm not even using that to point. Like, anytime Harden's in play, I have nine times out of ten, I'm using him at the shooting guard spot, not the point guard spot. Davis, who, who are some point guards for you? I mean, I think those guys broke down the important ones at the top. I don't see the mid-range being really profitable here. Maybe maybe Jeff Teague, maybe Kemba. But uh, if I was going to say that there was one minimum price guy, campaign for the Bulls. There we go. He, he, there played, we go. 20, he played 23 minutes with Wade and Rondo out. They have incentive to – they have incentive to play him to see – I mean, they, they traded for him. They gave away assets for him. So I could see him being playable. All right, in this game against Memphis, the the last game against Memphis, this guard played 24 minutes. Before that, he played 22 minutes. Who am I? He played against Portland and then Memphis. He's 4,500 tomorrow or today on DraftKings. Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin's 4,500 playing against Atlanta. I uh, definitely think that he's going to be in play. And if Jeremy Lin does things in 24 minutes, that he's, he's fine. It's going to be an up-and-down pace. I like him. Any other plays for cheap point guards that you guys like? Yeah, I think uh, Ty Lawson's in play, even though it's a tough matchup. I think we saw, we saw last game out how, how he's going to look, and I think that's fine. Um, tough matchup, but that price is nice at 4.9. And then I think Drew is, is in play for tournaments still. Like, I think his – his price down, you know, New Orleans versus Toronto. I think I like Boogie, him, and AD, all kind of tournament viable options, I think, every night for the next couple of weeks just until we kind of figure out how that rotation settles. I think Jeff Teague is kind of the guy in that range that I'm going to go to. I know Davis mentioned him, but I just wanted to reiterate on that. Nate's the one that kind of got me onto this matchup with Detroit. I avoided a lot at the beginning of the season, but it's been lucrative lately. And uh, Teague has just been one of those guys that I can fall back to from the mid-range and feel good about it all season long. So I really, really like that play. Also, as far as DK goes, he's point guard and small forward eligible. He's shooting guard eligible on FanDuel. But Giannis against the Knicks, definitely. Always. Definitely plays. Price actually has come down again on DraftKings. So he's under 10K, and uh, we know what his ceiling is. Before that Philly game, his stocks had been pr- like way down relative right. to what he'd been accruing the rest of the year. Uh, Beasley, I mean, Middleton's back, uh, and I, I like Middleton, but you, you got no Beasley, no Park. I, I mean, it's as long as he can get some of those steals and blocks, or as you call them, stocks i think we're fine anybody on alfred payton at all he's 6k if if vooch remains out he's a tournament play for me and is 6k on FanDuel, which is nice what's not nice is that like alfred payton and dennis schroeder are kind of in that same mold as far as never know what you're going to get well dennis schroeder's just going to get benched yeah 
That was unbelievable. That was the yeah. most tilting thing ever. Did they ever say what it was? Is it because he got like in an argument with, with, with Dwight? With Dwight? Yeah. I believe that's when it happened. Yeah, right he after. got in an argument with Dwight and he gave up a basket. Yeah. It was three minutes in the third quarter. He didn't return. It was like I, he had 19 first quarter. Like, I mean, he I carried the, he carried the first half. He kept him in it. And all of a sudden you sit him and lose the game. And it was like, I just don't understand. I did just you, did you had any Alfred Payton? No, I had Schroeder. I had a lot of Schroeder. And I, was I mean, Schroeder. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That makes it, it makes sense now. But even aside from DFS, it was tilting. Yeah, easy. It'd be a fun time to go back to the well, though. I'm not going to lie. It would be. It'd be a really good time to go back. All right, let's go to shooting guard. Uh, Davis, who you like at shooting guard? Uh, I like Jimmy Butler. Controversial take, but uh, his usage <laughs> goes up quite a lot when Dwayne Wade does not play. He might quit. He might quit this game. There were multiple possessions where he just looked around and realized who was on the court with him. It was just like, nah. I'm yeah, not he, back his, on teammates are, his teammates are terrible, and he didn't try that hard, and he got 46 draft yeah. he, He's playing with D-League players, and literally he like looks at the ball and is like, nah, it, I just feel so bad for Jimmy. Just get yourself some Zipser then. Jimmy. I actually no, like Zipser. Your, for Zipser fever is more Zipser. I actually like Zipser at three. I think he's in play. Like, play no, the play, at, this, the play at shooting guard is, is Jordan Crawford, and we can just move on with our lives. Like, that's yes, I Steve love it. all day. That's all. That's, that's just – we just play him and move on. Jordan Crawford known for dunking on LeBron and then trying to scrub the video from the internet. Not possible. <laughs> uh, I, I think that, again, I like the hardened play at shooting guard. That's why – like I would like to kind of space it out, Harden at shooting guard, and then you could put like Chris Middleton at small forward, or if you wanted to, you could put Decker at small forward. Uh, you also have on Fanduel, yeah, Forney. He's not sexy, but he's going to get the job done. He's a good it, play. It is. Yeah. Like, I also like Lou. I think you know we already yeah. talked about Rondo being out, but Lou's a good play. Lose Waiters it. is really interting for me too after that monster game. He he struggled after the injury, but I think that's a confidence booster and you know Dion's gonna gonna chuck, so I think he's he's still in play for me. Let me just Beal, go and steal for tournaments. Okay. Bill's Bill's fine. Bill's fine because he has been crushing it lately. Just let me go ahead and reverse mush this. Uh so if you play Clay Thompson, I will find you and I will kill you. Like that is my because you just want to get all of them to yourself and turn. No, heck no. Why people are playing Clay Thompson? I do. I do not understand. It happens all the time. All Dude, the time. He I mean, was like sixty percent owned on FanDuel. Yeah. I've been playing Clay Thompson. I mean, with the rant out, like there's going to be more usage to go around. Like, yeah, that's why Clay he doesn't do it. He's still Clay Thompson. Score, like, if he doesn't score thirty five, right. you're done. Like right. that's what it is with Clay. Exactly. So I think he's you're definitely playing with trying to hit like lightning in a bottle with that game, that's fine. But I just if that's you want to, if you want to play him for tournaments, that's fine. He was almost sixty percent owned in some cash games. Okay, and cash some, and some cool. and some tournaments. And he's seven okay. K on DraftKings now. Like no. he's, yeah, and even at sixty seven hundred on FanDuel, play someone that's going to get some other peripherals. Again, just you're welcome in advance for the verse mush. All right, small forward. Who you got? Davis. From, I mean, I, I'm in no sarcastic at all. I don't think this position is particularly strong. I'm not interested in Giannis. I think Butler's a stronger play at shooting guard. I don't want to play Middleton with his current minutes limit. I think Wilson Chandler and Gallinari are both in play. I would prefer Chandler coming off the huge game. As long as Fareed remains out, he's like a smash. And then Decker. Uh, Decker's really strong for me too. There's not really a minutes limit on Middleton. They say there is, but there's not. There's not. He, just, he keeps on going over it. And I don't think they – have they even said that he's going to be on one tomorrow or have they said they might keep him on a minute's limit for the remainder of the season? I haven't seen anything on it, actually. Yeah. So, but, like, worst-case scenario, plays 32 minutes, which is fine for K-Mint, I think. He's not, not as much in play on a DK as he is for – FanDuel. I like him on FanDuel a lot. He's going to be, he's definitely going to be the chalk on FanDuel because they've been slow to raise his price. So Sam Decker, Middleton, Butler, they're going to be the chalk t- tomorrow. Uh, you've got Iggy. Do you see Iggy put up like 46 DK points? Yeah, he went off. 
That's, mm. I was just about to bring him up, but he's shooting guard only on DraftKings for whatever reason. So yeah, and his price tag is up there too. Yeah. What a, what about Gordon Hayward? Without, Gordon Hayward is the guy. I oh, like Nate, go for it, buddy. Dude, this I'm is always about Gordon. Spot to play him. Yeah. I'm always about Gordon Hayward. I do think that people overvalue. Like, I think I, I do think Gordon Hayward's in a good spot. Uh, I also think pace down games. He's still in a he's he's in a good spot sometimes. But this you is got to jam spot. Gordon Hayward in against Dallas. I think Gordon Hayward in this spot's good. I actually also like. There's another guy I like uh, hi, a higher priced small forward in this spot that I haven't. I like him. It's no, it's it's Paul George. Like Paul George. I mean, earlier in the season was rough, and he saw a game come, last game. He's starting to come back into form where he's taking more shots again. And I think since the All Star break, his usage has been trending up, and he's actually starting to make some shots. So he's been overpriced the whole season, but I'm actually okay with him right here at 8.1 versus Detroit. And I also think uh, Tabo's in play too at uh, at 4K. I think after the the I I agree. I like PG. I like Hayward. But at that same price, I think Melo's really interesting after having a day off. Uh, it's a pretty good game. That's going to be interesting for fantasy. I know Kitchen mentioned that earlier, but I like this game. I I, th- I think Melo could have a strong a seven point six on DraftKings. And he's think Giannis will be on him. Uh, I doubt they would that do that because they'd risk foul trouble with Giannis, and they want him to stay on the court. That's just yeah. my personal opinion on the situation. And they might go Melo at the four too. Yeah. You never know what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean Giannis will go go anywhere. Though. Is Terrence Jones going to start getting minutes? Why would they trade for him and then sit him? Because did he's he like get, an actual. Did he get minutes against Philly? Did he play against Philly? I don't think he's played yet. Last time oh. I looked, he hadn't played. Like the anything. comments, the comment that Jay Kidd made about we'll take him to Philly and see if we have any minutes for him or something like that. Like that was a he didn't he's not playing. Yeah, he hasn't played since the eighth when he wasn't on that team. So yeah, yeah, he probably. I uh, going back to Gordon Hayward though against Houston, potentially no George Hill. Already no Derek Favors. Like, uh, definitely definitely could be a, a really good spot for him. This, this should be. Are you worried about blowout, though, is this without six, those guys? No, it's a six-and-a-half-point spread. I don't think that – I mean, it's already a six-and-a-half-point spread, and we know that Favors is out. We don't know about George Hill, but I'm uh, assuming that they've factored that in. And there's also no Ryan Anderson, which, as much as you like Decker, he's no Ryan Anderson. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have the Jazz just been playing really well. Oh, Rudy, we Rudy Gobert has been guard, but, crushing. But if Rodney Hood starts at shooting guard with those two point guards out, I like I like Rodney Hood. Nobody's going to play him after that ordeal the other night when yeah. I loved him. I, I, I absolutely loved him, and then they you know wanted to limit his minutes. So that was a that was a pretty terrible situation. Yeah, it's just tough taking on that injury risk in cash. You know, just that's why only if he starts, I think. Yeah. Power forward, Nate. Um, I think power forward. <laughs> I think power forward. You got to start with looking at Demarcus and uh, and AD. I think I would lean Demarcus in this spot versus Toronto at nine point nine. I just I think those prices are too low. I know there's a lot of variance in Demarcus Cousins' projection right now because of a new team, but I like Demarcus Cousins at nine point nine. And then I also think um, Sam Decker. You can play him here at, at power forward if you don't play him at small forward, and then. Uh, kind of going down the list, I'd also look at Ersan Ilyasova. I think going up against Brooklyn, if he gets 25 minutes on that Atlanta team, I think he's, I think he's a really good value. Um, and then I also think, I mean, if you want to get, if you want to go crazy with it, you can play, um, you can play Gorgie going up against Clippers yeah. just based on, based on some minutes and stuff. They they they're just Minnesota can be all over the court with their minutes and stuff. I know that they've been giving Bealitza a lot more minutes recently, but I don't uh, think they like give them. I think it's like been dependent on how big the teams are going that they're facing. Yeah. And you have obviously the Clippers going to go big. So yeah, I think so he's going to be on the court. I think his minutes are solid there. It's just a matter he's his they're solid but he's no longer getting 37 38 minutes. Yeah. But I still think he's in play at 5.1. I don't mind playing De- I think small forward is actually more loaded than power forward. It uh, is. So oh, Cousins Towns Great, right, but those, but both those guys are center eligible. Dre just not really on my radar, um, but Towns is. I like Towns. I like Cousins, but Millsap. it depends. Yeah, it de- 
He's seven point seven. No, I'm Brooklyn just kidding. He's Bro- he's against Brooklyn. Anybody against Brooklyn is in play. No, I agree. Um, but because you're wanting to pay up for some of these guards, like it might be one of those situations where you look for someone to be hurt or some sort of backup just to play a cheap role. And right now, it could be Decker playing in that power forward spot. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't hate it. All right. I think the mid range of power forward is actually really interesting with guys like Stops, especially if he's back at the five. Going back to the well of Keith is probably going to be something I absolutely consider because I, I got smashed by him on this slate. So, you know, heading into the next night, I'm going to jump right back on it. And then Aaron Gordon has kind of been my guy yeah. since the beginning of All Star break, and he's been crushing. What about, what about LaMarcus? Um, I, I mean, I don't. I, it's just <sighs> risky. Like he's so bad. I'm worried about them sitting him. Yeah. yeah. I like LaMarcus, though, if he plays. Yeah. I, I agree just with that. It just depends. It depends. Like he's sixty five hundred. You saw last game, he didn't really do a lot. The the game before that, he did. It's like he definitely has a lot of risk. Uh, Ago is going to be the chalk on Fanduel because they again not raising his price at all, fifty seven hundred, and he'll probably be the the chalk along with Draymond or or Millsap probably. Kitchen, you really don't like Draymond? I think he's okay, especially on. FanDuel, where you have to play two power forwards if you have like a salary more, table. He's just a tidge cheaper. Just yeah. So are you going to have like 100% Steph then, Kitch? If you don't like Clay, if you don't like Dre, like – Steph is in a really forward. great spot. I mean, people can hate on Steph all they want, but the oh, bottom – Oh, will. The he's bottom, not even the best Curry anymore. The yeah, bottom, I'd rather play – I'd rather play pay Seth if he could be in the same matchup. <laughs> just stop. Hey, but the Steph bottom Curry line – Steph Curry or Yogi Ferrell, Nate? Yeah. Oof. That's tough. What, <laughs> what's the price discount? I mean, oh, this their normal price. Yogi's five oh, K. Steph is nine point five. Oof. It's Boston, Yogi. It's Boston. Yogi. Yeah, it's Yogi. Easy. Boston is so bad against opposing point guards. Boston just sucks. Loki. Oh my gosh. Loki, what team is good in the moment. NBA, Davis? Yeah. What team is good? Davis. Uh, the Rockets. The Rockets are good. There you That's go. the only good team I think. That's about right. They the don't Rockets. have anyone I think sucks other than Ryan Anderson. Gross. For GPP uh, in this spot, I think I actually really like Willie Cauley Stein. Nobody's going to be on him at 4.9 versus San Antonio. Yeah, he actually he came down pa- 200. He got yeah, power got, for that eligibility on DraftKings, too. Which is yeah, he's got, he's got huge upside. He got that last game, Vince. Oh, oh I didn't. I don't, did he? Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, he did. He did. I don't think he did. Because I played him in a power forward spot. I don't, and he did. I, I think I'm going to disagree with you there, actually. And okay. then in the same, I played him in the last time, too, and he, he was terrible, and he was center only. Oh, well, if he's terrible, then, yeah, he wasn't power forward eligible. And then in the same price range, I also think Bobby Portis could be in play at 4.6 if Wade sits. Kitch, Tut, uh, I think, won the massive 50K to first GBP on DraftKings. To, he's won everything. It's the month of Tuttle. Tuttle. It's just insane. It's March Mr. Tuttle Madness. He's just crushing everything. Well, there's there's 39 seconds left in this. Uh, if you mushed it yeah. live, oh, if you that's going to be live, on tape. This is bad. Yeah, that's Davis, be... you should have waited. Well, he, hey, he had 39 seconds. He couldn't. He couldn't let it go, especially hey, when we're especially oh, we're in man. the middle. Oh, I'm sick. I'm especially sick. when we're you in the better, middle of analysis. You better, you better hope. Oh gosh, this is going to be so bad. <laughs> Especially we're in, we're in their middle of analysis. Couldn't wait till after we get done with sinners. Have to just blurt it out when it's oh, not God. final. Well, the Matic Mush alive and well. Tuttle's sleeping anyways. It doesn't matter. No, no. It's no, gonna, I'm going to get the, I'm gonna It's get the wrecked. point. Yeah, it's the point it of it. People are now going to see this on video. Not going to be good. Davis is gonna Davis gonna have to. Oh God! I got too excited. I want you send out a screenshot and uh, from the Fantasy <laughs> Insiders account while while we're at it. <laughs> Just use hashtag Team FI. <laughs> oh, Davis! Never at the end of a game so hard. All right. <laughs> it's <laughs> like even your money. game. Yeah. Like it's his money. <laughs> well, we've got the oh, other. I, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> if it wasn't Tuttle, I would so. Oh. This is Davis. This is peak Matic right now. <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> Did he not oh. win it? Oh, God. <laughs> no, it's happening right now. Davis, tell me. All right. we. I want to mention while you're. <laughs> 
Well, Tuttle has a team in Slack. Tuttle has a team in Slack. All right. We have um, the Nikola Jokic. If he is out, you just got to bump up Wilson Chandler. You got to bump up Danilo Gonari. You do even have to bump up Barton, even though he, like, disappointed. And Plum. Plumley is a lock. We're going to get to centers in a second. Plumley is a lock if he's out. Uh, but I think he's going to be playing. I mean, he had a couple of days, right? So mm-hmm. I think he's going to be fine. But even at 5,400 uh, on like FanDuel, he's definitely in play. What's his price tag on DK Plumley? Uh, Plumley, 5.1. 5.1. Definitely in play. I mean, he's a double double waiting to happen there. Against against Washington, triple double waiting to happen. Triple double. He did have a few nice assists because that's what he does. He's the Plumlee. third best passing big in the NBA. I per, would for one of the guys on this podcast. All yeah, right, Paul Gasol retired. David, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> Paul Gasol plays ten minutes a night and doesn't do anything anymore. Paul Gasol literally has taken dumps that are more talented than Mason. <laughs> are you boys okay. done? Are you boys done? <laughs> you have. You've got Hassan Whiteside. Talk about centers tomorrow. You've got Hassan Whiteside, who is 7,700 on DK against this Charlotte front court. He's definitely, definitely in play. Uh, you have DeMarcus Cousins and Carl Anthony Towns that we mentioned. You have DeAndre Jordan that's 6,700. I feel like. I think he just got passed. Davis. 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 At least just finish the pod. Okay. All right. If you're going to like, if you're going to cost someone fifty thousand dollars, at <laughs> least finish the pod. Oh, yep, he got passed. Oh, and do it for the brand. Oh god. <laughs> Tuttle, I'm sorry. David. Oh, the good thing is that like he would have never known except for except this. Except for you. Except for this, definitely. He would have woke, no. woke up in the morning and been happy, but now everybody's going to tweet him and say Davis mushed you. What should be Davis Maddox's punishment? Tweet at us, at Fantasy Insiders. <laughs> Make him chop the hair off. <laughs> yes. I don't, I'm the only don't one on this podcast with the gorgeous hair, man. No, the hair looks good on Davis right now. Other Davis centers bomb, that man. you like, Rudy Gobert is at 7,600 against Houston. You look at his last two games, he's been absolutely nuts. Is Gobert in play for you, Nate? Yeah, I love playing Gobert. I think he's super consistent. I know that Houston's, uh, I mean, b- with pace up, but I think there's going to be plenty of rebounds available. I think, I think plenty of blocks. Great. Yeah, on James Harden. Do you think he sees full minutes in this matchup, though? Like, I could easily see them going super mm-hmm. tiny to get him off the court. They personally, don't have favors. They don't. Yeah, they don't have favors. And personally, yeah, they Utah, got Miles, who would actually fit. They're against. not going to stop it. Utah not doesn't going, pull Gobert. I'm just saying for Gobert. They're I'm not, not going to play the other one. I'm just saying they're not for, going to look. All Houston does is drive and try to hit layups or kick out for the three pointer. They don't take mid range shots. Is that what they do? Yeah. I haven't watched them before. Oh, okay. Well, why would you take away like if you have if you follow what's NBA uh, graphs or NBA math or whatever it is, you they have where uh, rim protectors within 6 feet. He's like far and away better than anybody else. Why would you take him out for Trey Lyles? Fence. I, it was just a question, Kitchen. I didn't mean to offend you. I, no, I well, truly listen, for... listen. It's tense right now Good on God. this show. The other you thing I would say is this, David. The you other asked. Thing I... You ask if he was coming if he plays a full amount of minutes. Yeah, I did. Favors I asked a question and, and then you Hill. got bent out of shape about it. So you know, Vince. That's... Listen, <laughs> I will come there to Memphis. Come I will whatever, take. Man. I will take one of those. Of drive. I'll give you five hundred. Right? I'm gonna hit your ride with Aunt Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to cut He'll you with one, your, with, with one of your woodworking tools. Vince, who do you like at center tomorrow? Um, I actually really like Whiteside. I know you talked about him a bit before. Um, I just – with if James Johnson remains out, like I think they're just going to have to play Whiteside. Um, and I really like Miles Turner against Drummond quite a bit. But I think Bismack is chalk anyway, so it, it might not really matter all that much. And Jan Mahimi. Do you see what he had? Seven steals in a block, 15 points, nine rebounds. It's going to happen again. Yeah, I like Miles Turner a lot from, like, offensive upside, but I, I'm a little bit worried about 
him picking up fouls defensively and and getting into some trouble. But if he doesn't, like he's got huge upside in that spot. Um, I also think I like um, if you want to take a stab at it. I think this is gross. Robin Lopez, if um, if Vooch plays, I actually like Robin Lopez at four point two. Uh, I think if Vooch doesn't play, beyond those, I think a better defender. So I don't, I don't like that as much. And then if Vooch does play, I think Vooch doesn't play at seven point three. But it's a non-existent conversation on DraftKings if Vooch doesn't play. Everybody's going to have Biombo. Uh, Davis, would you like to contribute anything positive to the show, or just <laughs> like yeah, maybe like- maybe something that will make people money instead of costing them? Yeah, I, I like Gobert a lot. Um, I think he's probably a cash play in this slate. Uh, Miles Turner, I think, will go overlooked a little bit, and Whiteside with no James Johnson against that Hornets bare bone front court, I think, is probably a play as well. Davis, you need a hug, man. You good? I oh, I'm like genuinely worried about it. Here, right no, now. here's why Davis is upset is because this is recorded. Davis like does. there is a history of this. And the second he said it, it was he, like he he's not a Where rookie. Did he end up. Did he get second? Well, it's it's the not game's over. not over yet. Like, it's still not over yet. Davis. Like, even if he got second, it's fine. He's 25000 But we, he might not even get second. So, um, <laughs> you Stop asking questions on this podcast, man. Really hostile work this is a very, there's, this is a very tense podcast. Oh, yeah. Booker Girl, made another three. Normally, it's just because Davis says something stupid about Al Horford. Speaking of which, if Al Horford does play, I think he's definitely going to play in this matchup at 5.6. Do you think he's going to play? I'll wave it. He's probable from what I'm seeing. I I do think he's going to play. Yeah. From everything I heard, I thought he was going to play the other day, but he chose to wait and rest up for Golden State. I think he's going to play. All right. Boston really wants this game. I think they're going to – narrative – like, I like like Boston in this spot. You like Boston – on the road in Golden State. Yep. Yep. Okay. They've, they've had Golden, that tough, that Golden State's an eight and a half point favorite. Like, this is a hot take by you. I want you to know that. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. Golden State's defense have been significantly worse without Durant. I think Isaiah, I think Horford, if Horford's there, I think they could do some. This should be a good game. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Any other hot takes from tonight for tomorrow? That pretty much it, Davis. You have anything? Anything? Uh, Tuttle won the Q. Oh well, congratulations! Wait, Congratul- one one, as in it's over. It's over. It's not over, it's and you over. just said that it's over. Uh, he did not win the shoot around, which was fifty thousand dollars. He got passed again, uh, so he won ten thousand. Hey, ten thousand is nothing to sneeze at. And Tuttle, he he won like the Thunderdome and PGA on Sunday. He, of course, he won the had the huge night last week. It's fine, Davis. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just I'm act, not logging on Slack tomorrow. Act like you've been there before. <laughs> Dudes is coming after you, Davis. That is no. oh, oh, oh Dudes. <laughs> Dudes is Photoshop. Roast you. Yep. Yeah. Dudes, he takes like uh, basically 40 minutes to go through a 10 minute clip of the pod or a video, it's going to be like double that because he's just going to be capturing all of the memes and the gifs from this, from this content. If you haven't already, please leave us a five star review or subscribe on YouTube. We would appreciate it. YouTube.com slash fancy insiders. We also, again, have the baseball product. There will be a little bit of an early bird discount. So sign up now. Get in for the World Baseball Classics. Ben Pritchett, Natural Slugger, and the rest of the guys talking strategy nonstop. I can't even keep up with it because we're talking lineup strategies. It's fun. So with that being said, Davis, you want to you sign us off? I feel like you should sign us off. Since Good, good luck on the slate, everybody. All right. See, that's how you end something. That's why you wait for something to end, and then you say it. Like a contest with 30 seconds left. That's close. People shooting threes. We'll see you next time, bright and early, on the GPB Breakfast Champions, presented by Wake Wood Wake, for all your woodworking needs.